Hey YouTube, today's video is about how I secured my network after installing some super cheap Bester P2P cameras. You might be thinking, why would I need to secure my network after that? Well, the sad truth is when you have cameras outside, you never know when someone's going to be walking down the alley and spots your camera and sees an opportunity to infiltrate your network. But in all seriousness, cheap cameras do pose a security risk. Let's find out why. All right, the sad truth, although I do appreciate the cost of these cameras, they actually kind of scare me. Without any port forwarding or any sort of configuration on your router, you can open up the app called XMI and scan the QR code and you can be viewing your camera remotely. So how is it that these cameras completely bypass any sort of firewall rules and just allow you direct access? Well, that's where the word P2P comes into play. There's basically a middleman. So the camera itself connects to the P2P server, and that is basically what brokers the connection between the smartphone app and the camera. So basically at all times, your camera is actually connected to the P2P server. Now, this is where the security risk comes in, or one of the security risks, is these P2P servers, generally with these cheap cameras, are hosted overseas, and we don't necessarily know what kind of safeguards these companies are using and these servers are running to protect our data. The cameras also run firmware that could be vulnerable to an attack. Because there isn't regular updates, and the fact that they're always connected to foreign servers, I personally think that this is a huge security risk. Now, I already have hard enough time trusting cameras like Wisecams, as an example. It's more of a reputable name, but you still never know how protected you actually are. So let's talk about how I've secured my network. So by creating a VLAN, which stands for Virtual Local Area Network, or Virtual LAN, we're able to completely isolate the cameras from the rest of the network. And in order to do that, we need something called a managed switch. And lucky for me, all my switches are managed. Now, if you want a solution that you can do yourself and you don't have a managed switch, wait till the end of the video and I will show you a different way you can do this with stuff you've probably got kicking around your house. All right, so these are my main networking switches here. Um, the top one is a PoE switch. So. Jack 7 through 12 are assigned strictly to my CCTV VLAN, so anything that plugs into here will get an IP address assigned from said VLAN. And um, the DVR, of course, is plugged in, and three of my outdoor cameras are plugged in. Um, also, we've got another line which actually runs off of, it's basically trunked to the uh, 3COM switch that's outside, which is this guy here. All right, inside the shed we've got these two uh, black lines that uh, are buried underground that come from the uh, main switch inside. And um, these come over here, and this is a huge work in progress. This is my uh, outdoor shed slash carport security slash outdoor lighting controller. Um, video on that at some point. Um, so we've got a 3COM managed switch here, and the top port there, port number one, is assigned to my camera VLAN, which is plugged into this PoE switch um, back here. And this is just a dumb PoE switch, so all those ports are just directly on that VLAN and those feed to my outdoor cameras. This is the, uh, the backup DVR, and you can see some of the camera views there. I've also got the cameras from my uh, place of work piped in through VPN, and that's also kind of a backup as well. Um, now the way my firewall rules are set up in my PFSense box is that basically this is an isolated network. However, anything that's on my main network does have access to see the camera, the CCTV network, but not the other way around. That way I can connect all the cameras individually from a VM running Blue Iris on this guy. That gives me way better remote access and a much nicer interface than the XMI crap. Fun fact, this DVR is also P2P and you can see here it's got that uh, barcode there. Um, I'm not worried about showing it to you because the way this is set up does not allow you to access it. In fact, this is basically a completely offline system. One more interesting fact 
is the P2P server doesn't actually relay any video. All it does is broker the connection. So the actual video stream is direct from the camera to your phone when viewing remotely. You might be thinking, well, can I just port forward instead of using P2P? Well, I would actually argue that's even more insecure because you're directly opening up that camera to the internet. And as I mentioned before, you don't know what kind of vulnerabilities that firmware has. All right, now let's look at a simpler way of doing this that still secures the rest of your network from any sort of potential problems that could occur from running these cameras. So instead of making a virtual LAN, we're just gonna make a separate LAN. So this relies on the fact that your ISP allows you to do what's called port bridging. Um, in my case, I can just go into the web interface of my ISP provided router and turn on port, port bridging for port one. And what that'll do is it'll bridge the WAN and port one together, which will allow anything that's plugged into port one to get a public IP address. In this case, I'm using a Unify router because that's what I had kicking around and that is plugged into port one. So this laptop, which is plugged into port four and any devices that may be connected to the built-in wireless will be on my local area network. And anything plugged into the secondary router, whether it be via Wi-Fi or a hardwired ethernet connection will be on a completely separate network. That way you can use all the convenience features of P2P without putting your local area network at risk. The reason this works is because both routers have their own separate public WAN IP address, which means the firewall that's built into this one will protect the local area network from all the devices plugged into this one and vice versa. Presuming your ISP supports port bridging, this is a pretty easy way to secure your network in similar ways to the VLAN. The only thing you don't get is that nice feature of being able to set up rules so that you can allow devices on this network to talk to this network, but not the other way around. All right, in conclusion, there's a few options there to secure your network, and to recap, I highly recommend that you do not run these cameras on the same network as the rest of your stuff. Same goes for IoT devices, really, but that'll be a separate video for me. Anyways, thanks for watching, and if you found this interesting, uh, please like and subscribe.